Okay. Hi. There is a profound and very underrecognized opportunity in mental health, and that is psycholytic medicine. You've heard of psychedelic medicine, think of that as a journey to insight, but psycholytic medicine, which is a lower dose of the same medicine, as a way to gain skills. Psychedelics are amazing, but they're not right for everybody. They can be very destabilizing. People can be hit in the face with truths they're not really ready for, and not everyone can afford to pick up the pieces after that. Um, I'm Sharon Niv, I'm a cognitive psychologist, and I've spent the last couple of years exploring psycholytic ketamine specifically, partially because it's the only legal psychedelic, but also because it has some unique properties that no other psychedelics share. For example, it is a dissociative, and in large enough doses, it, psychedelic doses, it can lead to actual separation of body from mind, ego death, but in these lower psycholytic doses, you get a state that is undefended, open, spacious. People feel like they're bigger than their bodies. And the reason that's important is what psychologists call non-acceptance of emotion. That's the mechanism by which all negative emotions endure. Remember this, what you resist persists. To really heal a negative emotion, it does need to be fully felt. Why do we not feel them? Because they feel terrible. Uh, negative emotions, think of depression as like a heavy sickness, anxiety, constricted, panicky. Um, so it makes sense, you don't wanna feel it, but when you resist, you tense up and actually amplify those sensation. Here comes ketamine, gives you a spaciousness in which you can allow these sensations to wash over you without overwhelm and they can resolve and release on their own. This also relates to what uh, neuroscientists call memory reconsolidation. That's how all PTSD is actually treated. Trauma is actually a full brain network activation. When a traumatic memory is recalled, your brain simulates its original response, including the nervous system response. But with ketamine or any other way of feeling those sensations with safety, that memory can be stored again decoupled from the nervous system response so that when it's next retrieved, it's not retrieved with that same sense of panic. We now understand that there is a ubiquitous little t trauma phenomenon or relational trauma that we all experience early life stresses that disproportionately affect how we turn out, maternal depression, pure ejection. This suggests that many of us can be really helped by ketamine therapeutically. And the therapy world is starting to catch on. At last year's biggest psychedelic conference, one of the most attended sessions was a psycholytic ketamine session, plus an up-and-coming modality called internal family systems. But still, most therapists are not aware of this opportunity, and that's too bad for a couple of reasons. One, the risk for psychiatric and medical emergency is really, really low with psycholytics, suggesting that the training involved is much lesser than, say, with psychedelics. And two, the whole thing lasts about an hour. This can be incorporated into regular therapy sessions. This is important now because we're still in a mental health crisis and demand for therapy greatly outstrips supply. It would be a good idea to make each individual session more impactful and I can tell you that it really is impactful. I first brought this into my meditation, and I found that I was getting into states that Buddhists call open awareness much more easily, and with that comes spontaneous emotional release and a sense of insight. So I was really curious about bringing it into my own therapy, and when I did, I was really blown away. Um, that shift in perspective allowed me to connect a phobia I've had since the age of five to Holocaust trauma on both sides of my family. So for me, it's been a major breakthrough. And I'm really not the only one. Talking to patients over the last few years, I've heard again and again, this medicine helps me connect to my inner wisdom. I've really changed my relationship with my own pain and my own fear. I think we can say that we're now in the rising wave of the psycho-spiritual in terms of therapy modalities. Newer therapies like somatic experiencing or internal family systems no longer just look to like correct your thinking like CBT. They're reaching deep down inside of you and trying to heal the pains that have really defined your life, often from childhood or like in my case, from ancestral trauma. But it's not a panacea, as we recently saw this medicine at way higher doses than what I'm talking about, but still, or plus hot tubs, plus opioids, things can go wrong. And with prescriptions on the rise, it's important to educate patients about safety. So I would like to end on a call to action. Therapists, get interested in this. This is a patient who is open, undefended, prone to insight, and neuroplastic so that these insights stick. And scientists, help us study this to establish best practice for reduced risk and increased efficacy. And finally, let's remember that at the core of all of our biggest problems is human selfishness, aggression, indifference. 
Underneath that, there's always pain and fear, so we need all the most potent tools that we have to really correct the course of human history. And this is a big opportunity we shouldn't ignore. Thank you.